Okay, you've got Homebridge set and ready to go. In this video, I will give you five essential Homebridge tips that you need to know for an amazing Smart Hub integration. Plus as a bonus, I will also show you on how to change the default login wallpaper from this to this. So as an avid user of Homebridge, I thought of sharing my five essential tips to have an amazing Homebridge integration into your smart home. Now these tips are things to do once you have Homebridge installed and these are the ones I personally use or when I assist others as well. Anyways, if you're into smart home DIY and obviously love the Apple HomeKit ecosystem, I have done tons of tutorial videos that you can use now. So please to take a look and don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe to always follow along. Well, these tips are applicable on any hardware platform running Homebridge. In my case, it is already installed in this Argon One case together with a Raspberry Pi 4. And don't worry, in the description, I've also left links to the tutorial videos on how to set up Homebridge. So these tips will ensure your Homebridge service functions well on your network. Now, when I say functions well, means that your plugin devices respond quickly and update their status in HomeKit correctly as well. But before we start, I also have a bonus tip on how to change the default login wallpaper. So you wanna stick till the end. So let's not waste any time like I always say, and let's get to know the essentials. So the first tip is enabling the right network interface. Now, when you connect your Homebridge server to your network, you have two options, connect it via a LAN cable or connect it through the wireless LAN. Now you have to tell Homebridge on what it is connected to. It does it automatically, but at times when you try to connect it over two interfaces, your router kind of enables and dedicates two IP addresses to the LAN interface as well as the wireless LAN interface. Now when this happens, Homebridge is advertising and listening on two different IP addresses. When this happens in HomeKit, or in the Apple Home app, you will see a slight delay for it to get status of the devices and publish it correctly to HomeKit. So in this tip, what we're going to do is we're going to tell HomeBridge on how it is connected. So we're going to go to the HomeBridge settings. We're going to click on the gear icon and we're going to click on the ethernet interface. That's how it's correctly connected and also the IP address. Now, before you go and hit save, you also want to make sure that the IP address is saved and reserved in the uh, router setting. So it could be any brand that you're using. In my case, it's Ubiquiti. So I went to my device list. I clicked on Homebridge, went to settings, and I enabled the use the fixed IP address and provided this IP address. So it matches between the two. Now I will go ahead and click on save and then go ahead and restart the Homebridge server. So when this service restarts, it will always make sure that it's advertising and listening on the correct IP address. With this, you can ensure that this improves the functioning of your Homebridge service on your network. So now when you go back to Homebridge settings, you will see that it's selected the right interface. So that's tip number one, is enabling the correct network interface. Tip number two is choosing the correct MDNS advertiser. Now, MDNS in action is when you type homebridge.local and the port. That's MDNS in action. It's able to convert names to numbers. Now, when Homebridge is installed, it offers you three types of services. The Bonjour app, Hawaii, and Ciao. Now, when you consult the Homebridge Wiki, the Bonjour app is the default and legacy advertiser. It is not as efficient in terms of system resources, usage and network traffic compared to other options. The latest and the greatest is Xiao. It is um, more compliant, advertises on multi-DNS and is a special library developed by Homebridge. And this it provides the best experience However, in some old network setups, it still does not work where you can use Bonjour app to be the substitute. Now, if you have a new network, a Wi-Fi 6 or the latest and greatest router setups, 
my recommendation is to change it to chow and give it at least another for 24 to 48 hours to see the difference if you see no difference you can always revert back to bonjour so select it to chow and together with the network interface you will see that a response from your devices is a lot more improved so let's go ahead and restart the service now the third tip is using child bridges so when you install your plugins you are given the opportunity to set it up as a child bridge so any of these plugins over here can be set up as a child bridge now what is a child bridge a child bridge allows you to run multiple home bridge instances than the primary one now the advantages of using child bridges are you can isolate plugin code from the main bridge so if anything happens to the child process it does not directly impact your home bridge service and your services still continue and if there are any plugins that are slow not been updated over a period of time especially those plugins have been not been updated more than 24 months you can push them as a child bridge so if anything happens to it or if it runs slowly it does not impact the overall home bridge service and especially plugins that use camera services like a unify protect or even the camera plugin it's good to enable them as child uh, bridge services so very easy to uh, to enable it, but there's only one drawback or uh, it all depends on your hardware setup so if you have a, a pi zero if you enable more than two three bridges you are going to slow down because of hardware um, requirements so every time there's a hard uh, child bridge setup it uses 20 to 30 mb of uh, ram and cpu resources that's why tip number two of using Shao as your MDNS advertiser reduces the overall CPU usage significantly. So to enable a child uh, bridge for any of these plugins here, all you have to do is click on the tool icon, go to bridge settings, and you can turn on this setting to enable the child bridge. You can click on save and you can restart the bridge. So in my case, I have one setup for my unify protect so if you go to bridge settings you'll see that it's already bridge paired and enabled so when you have a bridge paired it will present to you a qr code and you can go ahead and add it so once you have your child bridges installed you can access them on your dashboard by clicking on the plus sign so with this you can see their status restart it you can individually restart e any of these bridges that I've completed. So if I click on this, it's going to restart only the sound touch plugin that I have, which is pretty old. And it will show you over here that it's restarting that child bridge process. So very handy tool to isolate the troubled plugins. Tip number four is changing the port settings. Now, if you have many services on your network with different port settings and all that complication you are allowed to change the port settings of homebridge so you can do that by going to the ui settings and you can change the port address over here now just in case if you are not able to change it through the user interface you can do it in the terminal or by using putty so to do that we can open up terminal and then you can go ahead and paste this link now i've left this link in the description just in case if you want to change the port type enter and we're going to go all the way down to platforms to update it so i'm not going to change it but this is another way to update the port settings if the user interface is unable to load so you can go here under platforms and enable the port or change the port settings for yourself so that is tip number four on how to change port settings every time you change the port settings you want to restart the server so it can be accessed tip number five is managing cache accessories now this is when you install and uninstall multiple plugins there are some devices that are stored in the cache now you want to delete them because homebridge still thinks that it's available so it goes and looks out for these devices and if you've removed it and it still persists in the homebridge service you can remove it by going to 
Homebridge settings. You want to click on the manage cached accessory. So remove single cached accessory. So here you can select the device that you want to remove. So you can delete it from here, restart it. So it removes all the devices that are no longer required in your Homebridge instance. So now if you want, you can remove all of them from here. So this removes everything but mind you when you do this you'll have to reset up entire home kit devices that have been rediscovered so you want to do this cautiously so these are the five tips on enabling your um, home bridge service to function correctly on a network now the bonus on how to enable or change this login wallpaper is very easy and i think it just gives you your own personal uh, touch to it. So to change the initial login wallpaper, all you have to do is look for any website that you have. So in my case, I'm going to be using this link and you can choose whatever you want, but you want to make sure the file size is less than 100 uh, kilobytes. So that's very important. So it can load quickly. So to change it, what we're going to do is we're going to open up terminal. Now, if you're using PC, you can use the PowerShell to access the Raspberry Pi that you have or even your Mac or Synology now. So you can use PowerShell. And what we're going to do is first, you want to save this file at a specific location. So in, in my case, this is already saved on the desktop. And what we have now is going to go to the location on where this file is stored. So we're just going to type in ls. So it's in my desktop. I'm going to cd desktop k in ls. So we can see that the file is over here. Now let's go ahead and open up another terminal window in login to the Raspberry Pi. Now in the home directory over here, we're going to make a directory called wallpaper. So that's the directory. Now what we're gonna do over here is we're gonna copy this file to this location that we have created. So we're going to type SCP, we're going to type in wallpaper, tab, we're going to put in the login of the Raspberry Pi, which is Pi, at the rate of the IP address of the server, double colons, we're gonna type in here, home, Pi, wallpaper. And we're just going to hit enter. It's going to ask you the password of the Raspberry Pi. Put in the password, hit enter. So you see that the file is here. So if you type, go to CD wallpaper, LS, you see that the file is right here. Now let's log it into the Homebridge web page. You want to log in. You want to go to UI settings. You want to go to advanced and all the way down to custom login wallpaper. So here we're going to type in home pi wallpaper forward slash and what we're going to do is we're going to take this name copy paste it here and we're going to click on save. Once that's completed you want to reboot and then you just want to log out and just like that you have now updated and changed the default login wallpaper to the one you like and prefer. And just like that, these are my five essential home bridge tips that you now know to have an amazing Smart Hub integration. Plus as a bonus, you also know how to change the default login wallpaper. Anyways, I also have a list of home bridge tutorial videos that you can use and also feel free to check them out. Now, don't feel shy to like, share and subscribe. And until the next time, my friends, stay safe, have a nice day and cheers.